once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and brought my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will he laugh and just cry. And he will answer by and by. by. Feel a little prayer will turn him. Will no little fires burning. Find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. When was the last time you had a little talk with Jesus? When was the last time you told him all about your troubles? When was the last time you had a little talk with Jesus? What did you tell him? And what did he say? Get your Bibles. We're going to talk about this today in our Bible class. Have a little talk with Jesus. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. We're in the process of a wonderful series dealing with sermons and songs. We've been looking at various songs hymns and spiritual songs and deriving a spiritual message from those songs. And today we have another song that we want to elaborate upon. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. That's the song. Listen to the lyrics of, of this song. Uh, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now, when you feel a little prayerful yearning, as your heart up to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. That's our subject for this Bible class. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. I want you to listen to the, the text today found in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 7. And then we're going to transition to Luke uh, chapter number 11, beginning with verse number 1. Two passages of scripture we want to discover and we want to elaborate and we want to study today. First of all, Matthew 7, verse number 7, and then Luke uh, chapter number 11 and verse number 1. Listen to what Jesus says, uh, first of all, in Matthew 7 and verse number 7. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone that acts it, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knock it, it shall be open. Jesus says emphatically, when you ask God, or when you ask, it shall be given. And when you seek, you will find. And when you are knocking on God's door, God will open the door. Have you ever... Uh, Ask God and you didn't receive. Go ahead and shake your head and say yes. Have you ever sought uh, from God and God did not give or God did not deliver? You can shake your head again. And have you ever knocked on the door of God and simulate God did not answer? You can nod your head yes again because all of us have been in these situations before. Well, there is a reason why God does not answer. There's a reason why God does not, uh, when you seek him, you can't find him. There are reasons why God does not answer. When you have a little talk with Jesus and, and you tell him all about your problems, sometimes seem as though God does not answer or God does not respond. But there is a reason for that. One of the best days in my life in my Christian life, 
is the day that I learned how to pray. One of the best days in my life is the day that I learned how to have a little talk with Jesus. What I found in my own personal life, in the life of many Christians, the reason God does not answer is because we don't know how to pray. Let me say it again. Many times the reason God does not respond or the reason God does not answer our prayer is simply we do not know how to pray. My proposition is this today. When we learn how to pray, God will answer all of our prayers. Let me say it again. Let me say it very loudly and very emphatically, and I want to prove it today. When we learn how to pray, God will answer every one of our prayers. So it's incumbent upon us to learn how to pray. It's incumbent upon us to learn how to pray. One day Jesus' disciples came to him. I'm in Luke chapter 11, verse number one. They came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to pray. Evidently, they had looked at the prayers of Jesus and how Jesus prayed. Oh, when Jesus prayed, things happened. When Jesus prayed, his father answered. When Jesus prayed, 5,000 were fed with a few loaves and a few fish when Jesus prayed. When Jesus prayed, uh, blind eyes were opened when Jesus prayed. When Jesus prayed, lame men took up their bed and walked when Jesus prayed. When Jesus prayed, dead men rose from the grave. I tell you, when Jesus prayed, things happened. But conversely, sometimes when we pray, it seems like nothing happens. Can you say amen? Sometimes when we pray to God, seemingly nothing happens. We become discouraged. And sometimes we give up on prayer and sometimes we give up on God because sometimes we pray and seemingly nothing happens. Have you ever been there? Have you ever prayed honestly to God? You had a need, you had a, a pressing desire, and you prayed to God, and seemingly nothing happened. But what I want to deal with today, we want to learn how to pray. And we want to learn how to pray from a man who knew how to pray. Because prayer is is a learning experience. Let me say it again. Prayer, effective prayer, is a learning experience. To have a little talk with Jesus, we must learn how to have a little talk with Jesus. So therefore, it is incumbent upon us in this lesson to learn how to pray. Learn our prayer is a learning experience. Oh, yes, it is. And I want to say emphatically again, that when we learn how to pray, God would answer every one of our prayers. Listen to him again, what he says. Ask, and it shall be given. Did you hear that? Seek, and it shall be found. Knock, and the door will be open. Emphatically, Jesus said, and he said this, Everyone that acts it, receive it. Everyone, everyone that acts it, receive it. So therefore, if you are not receiving and if you are not uh, getting an answer from God, something is wrong with your prayer. Excuse me, pardon me, I want to say it again. If you don't hear from God, God does not answer your prayer, then something is wrong with your prayer. So it is incumbent upon us to learn how to pray. When was the last time you had a little talk with Jesus? When was the last time you had a little talk with Jesus? 
One of the things that uh, we must understand about prayer, first of all, is that prayer uh, has to be regular, constant. God wants to hear from you every day. God wants to hear from you in all situations, under all circumstances, when it's good, when it's bad, when you're up, when you're down, when you're rich, you're poor. God wants to hear from you. God wants to hear from you. Prayer must be regular. The text again, when Jesus says, acts and it shall be given if you read the Greek of the original language, it says, keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking on the door. Those are the kind of prayers that God answers and God honors. When we keep on asking, we keep on seeking, we keep on knocking on the door, God wants to hear from you every day. When was the last time you had a little talk with Jesus? And the Bible says these words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse number 17. Pray without ceasing. Turn it around, Gray. Don't stop praying. Keep on praying. Pray all the time. That's what the Bible says, and those are the kind of prayers that God honors. Well, I got to let you know this. If you, don't, if you are not having a little talk with Jesus, if you are not constantly praying to Jesus, something is wrong with your relationship with Jesus. I, I want to say it again. Something is wrong if you are not constantly praying to the Lord. This is a symptom of a broken relationship. You see, when we have a close relationship with someone, we communicate with them all the time. When you have a close relationship with your spouse, you are constantly communicating with that spouse. But when there is trouble in the relationship, when there is trouble in the marriage, communication breaks down. So if you are not talking to God on a regular basis, something is wrong with your relationship with Jesus. The communication has broken down. And it's your fault. I want to say it again. It's not God's fault. It's your fault. God is not answering your prayers. I want you to listen to this. Oh, it stunned me when I read this scripture uh, one day. And in Isaiah chapter number 43 and verse 22, God said to his children, Israel. God says to Israel, Thou hast not called on me, O Jacob. That's what God said. To o Jacob, O Israel, you have not called on me. You don't pray to me anymore. You don't talk to me anymore. The relationship has broken down. Have you been there? Have you been there? Maybe God is saying the same thing to you. Put your name in the blank. You don't talk to me anymore. Maybe God is saying that to you. You don't talk to me anymore. You don't communicate with me anymore. You don't call upon my name. You don't have a little talk with me anymore. Something is wrong in the relationship. And then God says something strange and troubling. This is what he said. You are weary of me, O Israel. You are weary of me, O Israel. You are tired of me, O Israel. You are tired of communicating with me. You are tired of talking to me. Could it be that you are tired of God? Could it be that you are, are tired of God? Could it be that you are tired of going to church? Could it be that you are tired of, of studying the word of God? Could it be that you are just tired of serving the Lord? Could it be that you are tired of God? Oh, how drastic it is. God said, you are tired of me. 
And I believe that there are Christians today that are just tired of God. They're tired of going to church. They're tired of giving. They're tired of serving. They're just tired. They're tired of the Lord. Oh, there are some Christians, there are some Christians, I, I tell you, the only time they talk to the Lord is when they're in trouble or when they need something. I said that there are some Christians that the only time they talk to God is, is when they're in trouble and they need something. Oh, what a tragedy it is. I read about a man in the Bible by the name of Jonah. He was in that situation. God told Jonah, the prophet, to go to Nineveh and preach the word of God, but Jonah wouldn't listen. The Bible said he went in the opposite direction, got on a ship, going to Tarshish. He wouldn't listen. And if you read the text, Jonah never communicated with God. He never prayed to God. There was no relationship. He was running from God. Have you ever ran from God? Have you ever ran from God? He never talked to God. Until he got into trouble. You know the story. Oh, he got on the ship and God sent a storm on the ship. The Bible said God sent the storm. And then the marinas on the ship threw him overboard. And not only that, but the Bible said that God sent a big fish, a whale, to swallow him up. Now Jonah is in the belly of the whale. Now Jonah wants to pray in the belly of the whale. Now Jonah wants to pray. He did not want to pray earlier, but now he wants to pray in the belly of a whale, in trouble. And the Bible says, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible said that Jonah called on the name of the Lord and the Lord heard him. The Lord hears him now. The Lord had to get his attention by the storm and by the way, when God got his attention, he was in trouble now. He needed something. Then he called to the Lord and the Lord was so merciful and the Lord so good that the Lord answered Jonah in the belly of the whale. But God had to get his attention first. Well, let us learn how to pray. When the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. You know what Jesus did? He taught them to pray. He gave them what is called the Lord's Prayer. And we pray it all the time, but we don't know the meaning of the real Lord's Prayer. It's found in Luke chapter number 11, verse number 1 through 6, and then Matthew chapter 6, the Lord's Prayer. I want you to listen to what Jesus said when the disciples asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. Jesus said, you ought to, pre uh, you ought to pray like this, our Father. Start your prayer. Our Father, you want to have a little talk with Jesus? You want to have a little talk with God? Jesus said, you start your prayer with our Father. That's very significant. It's very significant because it insinuates for God to answer our prayer, we must have a relationship with him. We must be his children and he must be our Father. That's a personal relationship. Our Father. We are children of God, and when we are true children of God, oh, God will answer our prayers. You can have a little talk with Jesus when you have a relationship with him. Do you have a relationship with him? Do you talk with him? Do you have a little talk with him? And yes, it insinuates obedience. A child, a good child, is obedient to his father. And when we are obedient to God, Oh, God answers our prayer. I said, when we are obedient to God, God will answer our prayers. Oh, the Bible says this. Oh, listen to God. Isaiah chapter number 59, verses 1 and 2. Behold, the hand of the Lord is not short that he cannot save. God said, my hand, my hand is not short. My hand is not short, short that I cannot save. My hand is not short that I can't reach down and save you. And he says, and my ears are not dull that I cannot hear. What's wrong, Lord? The Lord said, it's your iniquities and your sins have hid his face from you and he will not hear. Your sins, your iniquities, your, your, your wrongs are blocking God. It is blocking the signal to God. 
your sins. That's what God says. Then the Bible says, God says, if you want to have a little talk with Jesus, you want to have a little talk with God, he says, and you pray, pray like this, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Can I let you in on a secret? Many times God doesn't answer our prayers because our prayers are not in the will of God. Our prayers are not in accordance with his will. Our prayers are not in accordance with his, in his word. And God will not answer. Let me say it two or three times. God will not answer a prayer if it's not in accordance with his will and his word. Yes, many of our prayers are not in accordance with the will of God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Thy will be. I want to, I want to read this passage of scripture to you as well. First John chapter five and verse number 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. We have confidence we have confidence if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Oh, yes. Because God, my brothers and sisters, God has your best interest in mind. God knows you and God loves you and he has your best interest in mind. He knows you better than you know yourself. And so he's going to act. He's going to answer you according to his will. He's going to give you the best. Oh, and then we, we need to just uh, pray to God. Oh, Lord, I pray for this according to thy will, Lord, according to thy will. Let me say this. It may sound crazy, but sometimes the will of the Lord is that you suffer. What did you say, Greg? I said, sometimes the will of the Lord is that we suffer sometimes. That's in God's will sometimes. You may not believe it. If you don't believe it, ask Jesus. God's will, the Father's will, was that Jesus suffer and die. If you still don't believe me, ask Paul. The will of God was Paul to, to suffer a thorn in the flesh. It was God's will. And Paul Paul prayed to God three times and God did not answer. God did not remove the thorn because it was in the will of God that Paul would suffer. That's God's will. Then something else Jesus said, if you're going to have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles, you got to be willing to forgive others. That's what Jesus said in that prayer. Forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. Forgive us, Lord, our debts. Forgive us of our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. That's in the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said, if you're going to pray, if you're going to have a little talk with Jesus, then you must be willing to forgive others. Don't you come to God and Praying to God, you holding a grudge against someone. Get up off your knees. Jesus said this. If you will not forgive others of their trespasses, neither will your heavenly father forgive you of your trespasses. That's what Jesus says. You've got to be willing to forgive. You, got, you can't be holding a grudge against someone if you want God to uh, hear your prayers and forgive you. Oh, yes. I want to let you in on something. I want, to, I want to show you a prayer in the Bible. Oh, a powerful prayer. A prayer so powerful that, that it changed the mind of God. Oh, when you pray and it changes the mind of God, that's a powerful prayer. This prayer is found in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 20. It was so powerful that it changed the mind of God. King Hezekiah, the Bible says that he got sick one day and he was dying. The prophet came to Hezekiah and said, Hezekiah, get your house in order. You are going to die and not live. The Bible says that that's when Hezekiah began to pray. 
and his prayer was so powerful. His prayer was so powerful that it changed the mind of God. God was ready to kick him on home to glory. And then God changed his mind. God told the prophet Isaiah, go back and tell him I'm going to add 15 more years to his life. It changed the mind of God. I got to ask you the question as we are wrapping this lesson up. Why did God change his mind? Why, what about this prayer from Hezekiah that changed the mind of God? I need to ask you that, and we need to elaborate on that. First of all, the Bible says this. If you read the passage, we're again in 2 Kings chapter number 20. The Bible says in verse number three that Hezekiah was a righteous man. A righteous man. He was a child of God. He did what was right. He was, he was living a righteous life. And that's why God changed his mind. That's why God answered his prayer. That's why God added 15 years to his life. He was a righteous man. The Bible says this in James chapter 5 and verse number 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. A righteous man. God honors the prayers of a righteous man. The prayers of a righteous man are powerful. And then the Bible says this. Hezekiah had a perfect heart. He had a perfect mind, not uh, in other words, he had a clean mind. His, his, his thoughts were pure. His thoughts were he was thinking about the things of God all the time. He had a pure mind. That's why God answers his prayer. And then the Bible says this about him, that he did good. He said to God, Lord, look what I've done. I've done good in your sight. And Hezekiah reminded God of the things that he had done. Oh, Hezekiah. But what I want you to know today is this. It's not necessarily what Hezekiah said, but what Hezekiah did not say. Let me say it again. It was not so much as what Hezekiah said, but what Hezekiah did not say. This man, Hezekiah, was dying. He was dying. He was going to die. He was sick to death, the Bible says. Well, listen to this. He did not ask God to spare his life. He didn't ask God to give him 15 more years. He did not ask God for anything. That's significant because he left it all up to God. In other words, he was telling God, if it's your will, whatever your will is. And that's why God, that's why God, that's why God changed his mind. And that's why God added 15 years to his life. Oh, Hezekiah, he left it up to God. I have a new prayer today. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. I'm sending up a blank check to God. Lord, you fill in the blank. You can put in a thousand dollars. I'm OK. You can put in a hundred dollars. I'm OK. You can put in five dollars. I'm OK. You can put in you can put in all zeros, Lord, and I'm still OK. Any way you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied because I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus. Whatever you say, Lord, I'm still going to have a little talk with you. Any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. Are you satisfied with the way God blesses you? Are you satisfied with God's answer to your prayers? That's the question we want to leave you today. Let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our fiendish cry and he will answer by and by. Yeah.
backs against me, but God.